Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The story begins on July 19, 2007 in Dombivli, Mumbai, around 4.30 in the afternoon. Kalpana Gawar, the mother of two girls and a school teacher, usually comes home after completing her remaining tasks once her children are back from school. What does she find when she arrives home? She notices that there's a lock on the outside and right by the gate lies a slipper of her 21-year-old daughter, Snehal Gawair. Upon entering the house, Kalpana first encounters a spacious hall where the entire family sits to watch TV, have their meals, and then retire to their rooms. Now, she sees a glass filled with water on the table, which strikes Kalpana Gawair as quite odd. Subsequently, she calls out for her daughter Snehal, searches for her in the rooms, and then even checks the rooftop, but Snehal is nowhere to be found. This surprises Kalpana Gawair greatly, because Snehal was supposed to be at home all day with no errands outside, and moreover, she had injured her foot while trekking with friends. Therefore, she couldn't have gone far, and besides, one of her slippers was still at home. Growing increasingly worried, Kalpana tries calling her daughter Snehal Gawair, but her phone is switched off. Never before had Snehal done anything like leaving home without locking the door and not informing her parents. Then, Snehla's mother, Kalpana, checked her phone's message box and found out that Snehla had sent her a message at 3.28. However, when she opened that message, there was nothing written in it. It was a blank message. As they waited for Snehla and tried to find out about her for an hour and a half, they didn't learn anything about her whereabouts. Meanwhile, at 7 o'clock, Snehla's father, Hindurav Gawair, also returned home from his work. In fact, Hindurav Gawair used to work at a bank, and sometimes he would get delayed due to work. But as soon as he came home and asked his wife Kalpana about Snehla's whereabouts, Kalpana told him the whole story that she had returned home from her work at 4.30, and since then, there was no sign of Snehla. At the main gate of the house, there was only a lock, and there was a sandal of Snehla there. Hearing all this and seeing the darkness, Snehla's father, Hindurav Gawair, started to become restless. Therefore, he first contacted some of Snehla's close friends, but none of them had any information about Snehla. Then, both husband and wife took some neighbors with them and started searching around the house themselves, but there was no trace of Snehla. Now, even after searching for quite some time, by around 10.30, they filed a missing complaint at the Dombivli police station. Then, they called their relatives again, but it was of no use. Snehla's parents were in a very distressed state. Meanwhile, Kalpana Gawair's schoolteacher called, and some colleagues of Hindurav Gawair also came home. Now, since it was very late at night slowly, the neighbors and Snehla's friends started going back to their homes. Snehla's parents' colleagues tried hard to reassure them that Snehla would be found, and after all, they had already reported to the police, so crying wouldn't help. You guys should go to sleep. But how can a daughter who has been away from their sight for the past six hours sleep peacefully in their eyes? Yet, Hindu and his friends, about the state of the house, and Kalpana and her friend in the adjacent room with a box bed sleep around 2.30 in the morning. Now, it's morning, and by 5.30 a.m., Kalpana Gawair and her friend wake up. After that, Kalpana begins to straighten the blanket that's come out of her bed's edge. But then, she hears a loud scream, and upon hearing it, both Hindu Ra and his friends, who were sleeping outside, also wake up and enter the room. There, Hindu Ra, his friends, and Kalpana's friend all try to ask Kalpana what happened, but Kalpana just covers her mouth with her hand and points her finger towards the bed. And then, when Hindu Ra moves the bed's edge, a hand from inside the box bed is seen. After that, when Hindu Rao fully opens the box bed, upon seeing what's inside, everyone in the house starts crying loudly, and Kalpana faints. In reality, the parents had been looking for their little daughter for about 12 hours. They found her inside that very bed on which her mother and her friend were sleeping. Snehal's condition was such that her hands and feet were tied from behind, and a cloth was placed in Snehal's mouth. It seemed as if Snehal was no longer in this world, but still, her parents decided to take her to the hospital. However, the doctor declared her dead just outside the hospital. 
Upon hearing this news, the police were also shocked, and the case which was previously a missing one has now turned into a murder case. In fact, Snehal Sardar Patel was studying in her second year at the College of Engineering, and according to her teachers, she was the best student in her batch. Snehal used to live in the Nainad Society of Dombivli with her parents. Additionally, she also had a keen interest in traveling. Last month, in June, she also went on a trip with some of her friends. However, during the last few days of the trip while trekking, she injured her leg, which resulted in her having to go to the hospital. Upon seeing Snehal's injury, the doctors advised her to rest at home for a few days. Therefore, for the past month, Snehal had been recovering at home slowly, and even on the 19th of July, after going to work with her parents, she was at home. Besides, her elder sister, Sheetal Gawair, had gone to London for studies. Now, the police have arrived at the crime scene with the forensic team. During the investigation, the police find out that Snehal's gold chain and Nokia mobile phone are missing. Due to this, the police also suspect that this might be a case of theft where someone might have broken into the house upon seeing the lone girl and, during a confrontation, resulted in Snehal's death. Anyway, the police send Snehal's body for a post-mortem and, on the other hand, try to collect fingerprints and other evidence from the crime scene. However, they only find fingerprints of the family members throughout the house, including on the bed from which Snehal was taken out and on all the house doors. By now, the police have already received Snehal's post-mortem report. It indicates that Snehal died due to suffocation, and there was no evidence on her body to suggest that she was forcefully restrained before her death. Furthermore, there was no sexual assault on Snehal before her death either. From all these findings, it was clear that it was not a theft case. Instead, the police believed that the murder was committed by someone familiar to the family or by someone who regularly visited their home and was well informed about their household. Anyway, Snehal's final rites are performed, which also includes her elder sister who had come from London. After this, the police begin their investigation to find Snehal's murderer. Firstly, the police began their investigation with her family, where a new character was introduced in this story. Hiran Rathar. He is Snehal's boyfriend. Information about him was provided to the police by Snehal's mother, Kalpana. When the police asked if Snehal had a best friend or a boyfriend with whom she spent the most time, Hiran's name came up. Subsequently, the police contacted Hiran for questioning, and that's when he revealed details about his relationship with Snehal. Hiran said, Our story began in 2004 when we met in college. Initially, we became friends, and by August 2005, we fell in love. Further questioning revealed that after entering into a relationship, Hiran frequently visited Snehal's home, and eventually, Snehal's mother became aware of their relationship. However, Snehal's father, Hindu Rao, was unaware of this. In the meantime, on another front, the police were also tracking Snehal's missing mobile phone using its IMI number because its location couldn't be tracked as the mobile had been switched off. Here, Hiran tells the police a new story. About a week before Snehal's murder, they had a disagreement. The reason was that Hiran had gone to a party with some of his friends without informing Snehal, and among them was a friend whom Snehal absolutely disliked. However, during this time, Hiran tried to reconcile with Snehal over the phone, but it was of no avail. Furthermore, Hiran mentions that the battery of his mobile had also malfunctioned two days before Snehal's murder. Sometimes his phone would suddenly switch off, and sometimes the battery would drain completely within minutes. That's why he often kept his phone switched off for extended periods. Hence, when the police began investigating Hiran, his mobile phone was also switched off on July 19th. During the investigation, the police ask Hiran, Where were you on July 19th? Hiran replies he works at a company named Voltus. He was there on that day as well. However, the police are not entirely convinced by Hiran's statements. Therefore, to determine how much of Hiran's statement is true and how much is false, the police visit that company. Where Hiran's three management trainee colleagues say that Hiran was at the company from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. that day. However, afterward, the police request the company's attendance register. What stood out was that the page for July 19th was missing from the attendance register. 
This led the police to suspect Hiron directly in Snehal's murder. However, on Hiron's side, he had three colleagues who claimed that Hiron was with them all day. But with Hiron's phone being off and the absence of the attendance register page for July 19th, both these factors cast doubt on Hiron. Despite the efforts of the police and company employees to locate the attendance page for July 19th, they came up empty-handed. Now, to further the investigation, the police once again approached the family. It was here that the police discovered that the seemingly happy family from the outside was never truly happy. In fact, the police first learned that Snehal's older sister, Shital, had filed a complaint against her father, Hindu Rao, with the police. In reality, reports indicate that Hindu Rao once beat his daughter so severely that Shital was forced to file a complaint against her own father. And secondly, the police discovered that there was often an argument between both husband and wife, Hindu Rao and Kalpana. Hindu suspected that his wife Kalpana was having an affair. Moreover, another man entered the story named Anil Jawalakar, who was actually a relative of Hindu Rao. In fact, Anil was the man Hindu suspected of having an affair with his wife. This is why Hindu Rao was always angry and there were constant fights at home. However, in this fight, both daughters, Snehal and Shital, stood by their mother. But now, with Anil Jawalikar's name coming into the case, the police called him in for questioning as well. So there were now four people under suspicion by the police. First was Snehal's father, Hindu Rao, followed by his mother Kalpana, then Hiran, and now fourthly, Anil Jawalikar. The police didn't suspect Shetal because she had been studying in London for quite some time. Afterward, the police had some theories about these four suspects. The first theory was against Snehal's father, Hindu Rao. The police said that after receiving the post-mortem report, it was evident that no force or coercion was used when Snehal was killed. Hence, someone from the family could be responsible. Hindu Rao's anger could be a motive, especially if he knew about the relationship between his wife Kalpana and the relative Anil. Both daughters had never supported Hindu Rao. Furthermore, Hindu Rao might have also found out about a relationship between Hiran and Snehal. Consequently, in a fit of rage, he might have taken his daughter's life. In their second theory, the police suggested that Snehal might have found out about the affair between her mother, Kalpana, and their relative, Anil. After this, both Kalpana and Anil became afraid that Snehal might reveal this to Hindu Rao. Due to this fear, both Anil and Kalpana conspired and killed Snehal, placing her body in a box bed. Later, Kalpana began pretending that her daughter had disappeared. Additionally, the police's third and final theory was that Hiron, who was discussing a dispute with a party, might have escalated the argument and, holding a grudge against Snehal, waited for a week. Then, under the pretext of visiting her, he went to her house and murdered her. Since the police couldn't find Hiron's whereabouts for that day, and the attendance register of his company for July 19th was missing, However, all these were just speculative theories. Therefore, on July 2, 2008, the police also considered conducting polygraph tests on all these suspects, during which basic questions were asked to each of them. And when the test reports came out, both Anil and Kalpana were found to be truthful. They passed the polygraph test with 100% honesty. But when the police reviewed the reports of Hindu Rao and Hiran, they began to suspect them because during this test, the suspect's heartbeat, speech, and blood pressure are meticulously checked while answering questions. However, Hindu Rao's responses made them suspicious. Moreover, when Hiran was questioned about his involvement in Snehal's murder, such as whether he was present when the attack on Snehal occurred and whether he strangled her, he failed to provide clear answers. As a result, Hiran was also considered deceptive in the test. Thus, this polygraph test was inconclusive for the police. Because of this, the police have now handed over this case to the crime branch. On the other hand, Hiran gets a US visa. He wanted to go there to pursue a management course, and he had applied for his visa a long time ago. Therefore, he leaves for abroad on July 30th, 2008, and faces no problem in going there because the police had not yet gathered any evidence against him in the Snehal murder case. Due to this, the police also appealed to the court to close this case. However, 
After several questions and answers about this case, the court dismissed the police's appeal and asked to continue investigating this case. As time passes, the year 2010 arrives. But by then, after the death of Hiran's father, he had to leave his studies and return to India on April 7, 2010. Upon arrival, after performing his father's last rites and all other rituals, he makes a rather strange decision. He goes to court and applies, stating that if the police or the crime branch still suspect me, I am ready to undergo a narcotic analysis test. Subsequently, Hiran was arrested on April 20th and was kept in police custody until April 27th. However, despite being in custody for seven days, the police did not find anything from Hiran. But after this, he was sent to judicial custody. Basically, judicial custody means that a person can be held in jail for a certain period based on an order from the magistrate. Here, Hiran had to spend about a month in jail. The reason was twofold. First, his phone was switched off on the day of Snehal's murder, preventing the tracing of his location, and second, his attendance record for that day was also missing. However, after that, the court released Hiran on bail on May 26th after keeping him in jail for a month. But upon his release from jail, Hiran took a major step in the case. He filed an appeal in court once again, this time stating that he did not want to undergo a narcotic test. Perhaps he made this decision out of anger, because anyone would be upset after spending a month in jail without evidence. In India, the law states that if someone does not wish to undergo a narcotic test, no one can force them to. However, in this case, Snehal's lost phone was traced by the police through its IME number to a stationary shop owner named Mansukh Shivaji Patil. During the investigation, it was found that this phone had come to Mansukh from an unknown person to sell a month earlier. The mobile was found lying on the street. However, even after Mansukh made a sketch of the man and showed it to neighbors, family, and people around, no one had any information about the man in the sketch. July 2023 marked 16 years since Snehal's murder. Every year, the file of his murder case is reopened once or twice. However, in this case, no new suspect, evidence, or witness comes forward. Even though there have been several appeals to close the case during this time, the court has not granted permission. So, this was the painful story of 21-year-old Snehal.